Thank you, Roger, for agreeing to what we envisage to be a 10-minute interview. The last interview I did attracted the criticism that it would have been better if I had supplied all the questions before collecting responses. So to the extent that my questions are pre-prepared, here's what I'll be asking. 1. Roger, you could be characterised as having the bleakest high-profile public view on the trajectory of this so-called civilization. Others with your views might fall into despair and inactivity. How do you stay focused and active? 2. What reading would you encourage others to do and reflect deeply on? 3. For me, the book of these times is Charles Eisenstein's Climate, A New Story. How do you relate to Charles Eisenstein and the role he is trying to play beyond polarisation in politics? Standing for a hashtag living planet politics. For Eisenstein isn't making a joke when he writes on page 56. The intensity and ubiquity of the conversation around fossil fuels causing global warming sucks the air out of the room for issues like wildlife conservation, habitat preservation, toxic and nuclear waste, soil erosion, aquifer depletion and so on. Tragically, as I will argue, it is, this is Eisenstein still, it is precisely these other issues that are the hidden drives of climate instability. Climate change is a symptom of ecosystem degradation, a process that goes back at least 5,000 years and has reached peak intensity today. It arises from the basic relationship that has prevailed between civilization and nature. Discuss. Five, do you ever think that you and or Extinction Rebellion are being played? Six, if I suggested that by being a polarising character, leading a polarising break-off movement from Extinction Rebellion called Burning Pink, you can be played by the media as an extremist and simultaneously serve the purpose of selling more electric cars, what am I missing? Seven, when you visited the director of Friends of the Earth, a YouTube film I highly recommend, you were accompanied by Larch, a green activist colleague of mine from the mid-90s at Lancaster University, where he took on that name. I interpreted Larch's reactions to your words as conciliatory, effectively saying that you weren't giving other parts of the green movement sufficient credit for what they have done. Discuss. Eight penultimate question. Whenever I'm involved in a broken relationship, as a mediator I value a clear statement of the action that each party grieves over or less helpfully resents. What action of yours encapsulates why Extinction Rebellion and you had to part ways? I'll say that once more. What action is it of yours that encapsulates why you and Extinction Rebellion had to part ways. Final question. Before watching another YouTube film, what action would you ask the viewers to take? And actually, that's a question for everyone, not just for Roger Hallam. So, what if you could influence what other people watching this film do next, please put in the comments below what you would encourage them to do.